Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to another channel episode of Yeah, because that made sense. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Today we are going to be doing a new episode or a new series, however you want to call it. It's going to be basically me receive logos from you and I'm going to provide my own personal opinion on how I think you could have just done it a little bit better. So that just sounds cocky but it's what I'm gonna be doing. So I've had a few submissions from my audience and they have created logos and I want to jump in Illustrator and just see how they've gone about their design process and what I think I would have done a little bit better. That sounded better, doesn't it? Yeah. This is gonna be an awesome series because it's gonna provide me an opportunity to just connect with you guys in terms of our both shared passion. Hopefully I can teach you guys a thing or two about design itself and the fundamentals of it when you go about creating a logo. And so before we jump in, I just wanna let you guys know, I don't know everything. I've been studying it for about four and a half years, so I am confident with creating a logo and I do know a little bit about the basic fundamentals that you should follow when creating a cohesive and structured brand. So let's jump into the computer, have a look at who submitted their logos and have a play around. Also, think of some names to call this series. I don't know, I don't know what to call it, so we'll figure that out. Sweet. So the first person that sent me an email was William Wiley and he says, Hi, my name's Will. I've been doing photography for around a year now, but recently started using Illustrator after finding the YouTube just for fun and have been making designs for a clothing brand and for a friend's website. I try to make original designs and also use my photos to make my clothing designs and logos. I'm still not the best at it, but I enjoy it a bunch even if it's just messing around with the tools and making random pictures in my spare time. I post a lot of designs on my Instagram at here's a little cheeky plug if you want to check them out. There you go. Good stuff. Thank you, Will, so much. Uh, and he's linked to Illustrator files, which we are going to need. Uh, let's check this out now. So here we have a cat, and I think this one is the logo that we've got going on. All right, so initial thoughts, great. First of all, it's great that you're just jumping on Illustrator just to have a play around. It's exactly how I started off. When I found a graphic design and started to like it, I was doing things for friends as well. Play around, I like this little illustration, but uh, these, these logos over here seem more like of an actual logo. So I reckon we'll put that one away and we'll just play around with this. So I don't know what the business is. It definitely helps to know what brand you're working with so that you can kind of target your design work towards whatever intended audience there may be. Uh, however, I'm just gonna tackle this one from just a design perspective, considering I don't know who the target audience is. I like this one just because it's got a bit of movement just in terms of the angles. I really like the color palette, first of all. The next thing that I've noticed is that you've used your brush tool and you've got some really straight lines and then you've also got some kind of freehand drawn, probably with a Wacom tablet. So what I'm gonna do is just clean up the lines and the drips on either side. It seems like you've copy and pasted them, so I'll probably do something similar and make it just a lot more straight and linear. So what I've decided to do here is just round off those dripping edges at the end of these arrows and just make them a bit more spherical because I thought just over here, it's just a little bit hand drawn and I thought I wanted to just make it look a little bit more structured. Now what I'm gonna do is probably add uh, some different stroke weights in the circle out here. And I'll probably just play around with actually rounding a few more edges and then we'll probably add some typography. So I just rounded the edges and I also took a circle out from the external ring. I just thought it could have just been simplified a little bit more. And I just changed the colors and the pinks as well alongside obviously taking the stroke out. And now I'm just gonna add a little bit of typography. I'm gonna call this what do you reckon? Swap and switch it. That's what I came up with. Why not? We could play around with some kind of cool, fun font. Here we go. I found this nice, cool little font that I thought was kind of bubbly and suited what we had. And I kind of played around with the typography, just using uh, size. Cause it and yeah, I just played around with the font, uh, just making the swap and switch it, just stack up on top of each other and I made it sit really nicely. I think if the logo was positioned like this, probably make this a little bit smaller like that. And then you can also position it like, you can stack it on top. So let me know, what do you guys Thing. Did we make it better? Did we make it worse? What would you guys do differently? I uh, would love to hear your thoughts. Mm. So our next entry comes from a person called Ben Seligson. Thank you, Ben, for submitting your logo. 
brother. I really do appreciate it. He said here, here are my AI files. Apologize in advance for not labeling my layers. All good. You guys don't need to label your layers. So Ben says, my goal when creating this was to make a logo that would reflect the work I do in video and photography without being your kind of typical camera logo. I know exactly what you mean when you say that everyone puts in a camera or some sort of, sort of aperture ring and lens when they're making photography logos. It's really hard to actually branch out of that, to be honest. I wanted to include the sunset because I started off taking photos and videos of the sunset four years ago and they are still my favorite things to take photos of. I plan on using the logo on my media pages as well as putting the logo at the end of all my film work. Thank you so much, Ben, for providing us with this awesome logo. Let's uh, download these now and open them up in Illustrator. So my first initial thoughts when looking at these logos, I think it's really smart of you to incorporate the horizon and the sun alongside with the camera and using obviously the sun to be the lens. I picked up on that. I think this one here is probably your most strongest one just because the whole logo is packaged together which means you'll be able to apply it on any background so i'll probably help you out with this one just to let you know guys when you're sending me your logos in your illustrator files if you've got typography and i don't have the font this is what it's going to look like uh just make sure you go object expand and expand appearance that way it'll turn it into a shape and i'll be able to see what actual font that you were trying to use so what i'm thinking of doing first is again probably just getting rid of the stroke i just think it's unnecessary especially considering the colors that you've chosen actually work on each other quite well and i'll probably have a look at a bit of typography let's copy her over so already by taking away the stroke it just looks much better on the outer ring and we'll do the same with the camera in here making the reflection a little bit different to how you had it yeah it looks like shit <laughs> just with the typography, I'm probably just going to make it all capitals because I just prefer sans serif, kind of just in your face. Let's be loud and bold kind of style. To be honest, I reckon that could just go. We just don't need it in there. And we'll probably just make this yellow, but just in the same style as what we've got going on with the red. And I just do that by clicking on the red and then just dragging your slider to that. So as you can tell, it's just not as vibrant. It just looks a little bit cleaner. And we could probably get away with making the sun a little bit bigger. We now bring it down to this size. What do you guys reckon? Which one do you prefer? All I did was make the camera on the inside a little bit thicker. I changed the reflection on the sun and made it just a wider color. I just think that kind of, uh, I can see what you did. You tried to use the yellow and make it a little bit transparent, but on the blue, it kind of created a little bit of a, I don't want to call it ugly, but it's kind of ugly. It's like an ugly brown. I took away the strokes of the outlines and the camera itself. We changed the typography to all capital letters and everything kind of just sits nicely on each other now. Yeah, let me know in the comments below if you think it's a job well done or if I did a shit job. And the last logo that we're going to be doing today is from a person called Brian. Uh, Brian says, hey CK Creative, this logo here is a logo I've done for school and it is for a coffee brand I made up called Log Cabin Coffee. I've been working with Illustrator for a year now, so my skills in designing logos are not the best. This logo in particular is my final. Love your content, man. Keep up the great work, Brian. And then he's got another cheeky plug at the bottom. Thanks, Brian. Really appreciate uh, your submission. Best of luck with your final uh, assignments. I can remember for me, it was quite stressful times. Let's see if we can add to this. Uh, once again, you can see that the logo font here hasn't been expanded, and so I can't actually see what he's got, but that's okay. Maybe we can see if we can use a different font. So. Initial thoughts. I do like the colors that you have used. Obviously very coffee-like. I'm not too sure what you're doing with these flicks here. I do like that addition. I just don't think it kind of works. Like the C clearly goes around and you've kind of cut it up so it kind of just flicks off, which is cool. But the thing is you haven't done it with the L. You're gonna do it with the capital C. You probably wanna do it with the capital L as well. And I'm really not too sure what it's trying to convey either. Uh, so we might have a look at that. Also the chimney over here is also a cool addition but I can tell that this has been live traced from a photo on the internet, which is like, it's okay if you can get away with it, but if you can have a look at the rest of the logo and then have a look at this, it's quite obviously live traced, um, uh, which you don't really want to be doing. You want to be tried design. If you don't know what live tracing in guys, it's basically where you drag and drop an image over top and you live trace it, which is an option that you can do in Illustrator and the computer basically vectorizes it itself. I do really like what you've done here with the uh, coffee bean as in use for the eye. I think I might even pinch this over, see what we can make with the kind of shapes that we have here. I've basically enlarged the coffee bean to the point where one was sitting on the top and the other was sitting on the bottom. 
Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell if you were just looking at it, but being able to use uh, similar shapes in your logos uh, creates just a lot of subliminal unity, I find. Uh, and I've just added a few transparent waves along it that kind of convey across as maybe like the froth looks like a little bit more of a latte kind of flavor. That's what I was going for. So I've also just made a darker shadow on one corner of the chimney up here just to give it a bit more of a 3D appearance. And I'm thinking of just playing around with a bit of the typography at the moment. So I found this font here. I'm not too sure if it's the right one, but it, it provides a bit more of a rustic kind of vibe. I feel like, you know, log cabin kind of emulates the same feeling as well. So that's why I've kind of gone with it. So what I've done is I've just made this, the white circle a little bit less intense. And there you go, guys. I stuck with the rustic kind of font that I found and I thought it kind of suited, especially once I added the nice script font with the coffee just tucked in under it. Overall, I really like the movement and the flow. The colors work really well. The only other thing that I would do is add some form of coffee bean in there, but I'm not too sure where I could. Other than that, I think I've done a pretty good job. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Did we add to it or did we detract to it? I want to know what you guys think. And there you have it guys, that's three logos uh, where I've shown you guys how I think I would go about doing them or making them a little bit better and which areas I would probably touch up personally. Thank you to those who submitted their logos. If you want to potentially have your logo reviewed and added in a video of mine, I'm going to be doing this a lot more. And so please send your submissions to ckcreativesubmissions at gmail.com. I'll put it in the description and I'm also put it right here. Once again, thank you to those that have already submitted. I'm going to be making an episode two and I would love to know from you guys, how do you think I could make these kind of videos a little bit better? Uh, this is the first time obviously that I've done it before and I have no idea what I'm doing. I really would appreciate your feedback. Once again, guys, thank you very much and I will see you in the next one. Yo.